Good morning, folks. We'll start today with the coolest lightning strike ever caught on camera. And I'm going to play it backwards to emphasize the atmospheric fire around the bolt and because it looks much cooler this way. As always, video is linked for you below. And why not show this given that nothing else exciting is really going on? The enormous plasma filament we saw erupting yesterday morning only got the job half done. A small CME is heading north away from all the planets, while the earth-facing portion of the rope stayed still and did not erupt. This leaves four or five plasma filaments on the disk that we will eye today. Solar flaring is on the decline as well, but now we do have some sunspots that appear ready to change that. First, we've got a new group up north above the established active region down south that is developing magnetic complexity in the center. Possible delta-class magnetics exist already. First gamma burst in a week came out of Canis Major this morning. On the particle side, we're seeing density dropping out in the solar wind and some speedier particles from a coronal hole began streaming in, but it is a weaker stream thus far and although a magnetic storm cropped up on the shockwave impact reported yesterday, it has waned away now and things are calming above our heads. Once again, right on point as the planets break alignments, the sun calms down and so do the quakes. Adding to that is the fact that we are between coronal holes. The incoming coronal hole has only moderate power by the way and is mostly blocked out by coronal magnetic fields. That makes the top two earthquake factors in the can. Forget six pointers, we couldn't even get a five. Most interesting quake of the day hit Canada. About all we got is the integrating space energy from yesterday's storm, which wouldn't integrate for another day or so. Top links for today include this, a new video from Dawn showing some of the close-up flybys of Ceres. The cratering, the lights, the strangely hexagonal forms on a rock floating through space. Never mind. Hey, remember when Rosetta's lander bounced upon landing on 67P and then fell down a chasm, being out of contact for weeks? Well, it is now back. It's actually pretty cool. More data opportunities coming on Rosetta. So that's Carlos just offshore there, not really moving quickly or giving us much to speculate about. Right now it's hard not to focus on the Gulf of Mexico where this system is going to go where it's going to go and just not much we can do about it. But until then we do see the same heat and moisture flow up out of the Gulf where the Northeast meets the Midwest. Once again, that's where we're going to have the storms tonight. In Europe, big low, still offshore top left, but the top watch here is now central off the Mediterranean heat and moisture. Clouds popping, flash flood potential accompanies those storm clouds. Then we come down under, and the two lows are in focus, one to the west, one already on land. These got together in a solid way overnight and are strengthening. We've got the ground level conditions and shots of our star to close at 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.